So I was browsing eBay and I found this uh, Xbox that was being sold for parts. And the seller said that the DVD drive wasn't working. And the bid was really low so I went for it and got it for $15 shipped. And uh, I thought why not try to make a repair video out of it. I haven't looked at it at all so I have no idea what's, what's going to be inside. I have no idea what the other problems might be so it's going to be interesting. Uh, also came in a Chick-fil-A box, which I really liked. Unfortunately, it wasn't actually filled with uh, waffle fries. Although, that would have been nice too. A whopping uh, 30 pounds. But it was an Xbox instead. So we'll just take what we can get. So let's first, uh, before we start taking it apart, let's just power it on, try a game out and see what happens. So we got a hooked up power navy cable, so let's see what happens. All right, so it's actually powering up. It's a good sign. Let's see what happens next. Can we get to the dashboard? Yes, we can. So I'm gonna hit A to reset the clock. And uh, looks okay. It's not making any weird noises or anything like that. So, I guess the next step is to try a game, so let's do that. So I got this one over here. I think, I think this is some kind of classic or something. We're gonna, we're gonna see what happens. Oh, so that's what he was talking about. It just won't eject. Hmm. What if I... What if I kind of like push it down? It simply won't eject, huh? What if I keep pressing it over and over again? Yeah, it looks like. Yeah, it's totally stuck. So yeah, I get what he get what he means. So now we have to disassemble it and see what's going on. So it's time to take this apart. Here's the tools I'm going to use. One, it's a T20 screwdriver, but I'm actually lying because it's a T25 Torx screwdriver. It turns out the 25 works just just fine. You don't actually need the 20. This is just because I don't have the size 20. And a T10, which you absolutely do need. Um, so I kind of skipped this part already, flip the console over, there are six screws, one in each corner, you got to take off the rubber feet using a, a tool or you could just use your fingernails, and there's two hidden screws uh, behind here where it kind of says a caution symbol, you can just cut that out, and then right down here where the serial number is, excuse me, serial number and you're going to need a T20 screwdriver for that. So once you take all the screws out, you know, like this. Uh, I want to note that this sticker was already broken and it looked like somebody already tried disassembling it and took it apart. Uh, I guess unsuccessfully tried to repair it. So I'm kind of wondering what I'm going to find in there now that somebody else has been messing around. So we'll see. Once you take the six screws off, the top comes off pretty easily. Uh, and next step is disconnecting the hard drive. Let me lift that up. This is your hard drive and this is your DVD drive. Uh, you're just going to disconnect the power and data cables from both. So let's do that now. Alright, so something that's kind of annoying to me is that whoever di disassembled this before didn't put all the screws back in. The screw for the hard drive caddy and the two screws for the DVD drive are missing. I think I have spares, but they're just one of those really annoying things when somebody 
attempts to repair it and he just doesn't put it back exactly the way they found it. Uh, so, it's not a big deal. Those screws aren't totally necessary. But it would have been nice to know that they were there. So we're going to take our hard drive out, put it aside. Comes out with the whole caddy. Same thing with the DVD drive. And uh, we're just going to take a quick look at the motherboard, even though I don't think that our problem lies there. I'm pretty sure we just got to look at the DVD drive. Uh, we're just going to take note of... Let me get some light. Just going to take some note of what kind of motherboard we have, uh, just in case we got to do some extra maintenance. So this chip over here has got a big X logo on it. Let me bring that up so you can see. Uh, you can't see terribly well. This chip right here, there's a big X logo on it. That means it's the latest revision of the motherboard. So we don't have to worry about that uh, clock capacitor problem that all the other motherboards had to, had to deal with. So I think we don't have to touch anything in here. It looks fine. It's a little dusty, but that's kind of how these things go. The fan could be cleaned a little bit, but I'm not terribly concerned with that. So I'm going to take our DVD drive, take that apart now, put the motherboard aside and the rest of the components. I got our DVD drive here, and I'm going to take note of the brand. It's a Samsung, which is kind of surprising. Uh, Samsung drives are usually the best uh, when it comes to the original Xbox and had the least chance of failing. Uh, when you take apart your Xbox, if you ever have to, you might have a different brand, so your mileage may vary. And also the disassembly will be slightly different. Uh, so getting on with this, the caddy just comes right out. You just got to lift the tabs on each side. And it comes out. I hear, I hear rattling. That's kind of concerning. There's rattling there. So, I actually haven't opened a Samsung drive before, so... I'm noticing that there's four Phillips screws on the back, so we're going to start there. I got the screws removed, and I'm keeping them safe in a medicine cup. Uh, if you have a different method you like to use, uh, like an ice cube tray, definitely a good way to keep track of the screws that you've taken out. So I've taken the four out, and let's see what's inside. I'm kind of hoping there's a free game, because you never know. Sometimes you open up a machine and you get a free game. Oh, there's no free game. Alright, so there's the top section. And I think we can do the same to the bottom. It just should come right off. And I was right. Alright. Uh, there's something interesting here. I don't think it's anything anything serious. There seems to be some kind of black stain right there. Let me see if I could focus on that. Yeah, there we go. Some weird black stain on the ribbon cable. I hope that's not like a burned out wire. I doubt it. Uh, let's just keep going. So if the DVD drive is not opening, that means there's something wrong with the belt or the motor. But I, since I heard it trying to open, I'm going to assume it's a belt. And I don't see anything really out of place here. So the next step is to try and open up the this little disc tray so I can get to the belt. And uh, we'll troubleshoot from there. Alright, so to take the disc tray out, I'm going to flip it over. Uh, reminder that this is... These are instructions for a Samsung DVD drive. It's going to be slightly different depending on which brand you have, but this is pretty much how it goes for, for all of them. You're going to flip it over and look for, in this case, a white tab that's located right there. It's a little hole right there. What you do is stick your screwdriver in there and you push that white tab as far back as you can. And what that will do is it'll push the tray out and then you can pull. Once you pull it all the way out, you're still not all the way done. Uh, there are two more tabs you can push on. I'm going to point them out to you. 
So tab one is located right here. You can make that that little black piece. And tab two is over here. Right next to this large uh, little hole. Alright. So I'm going to put it down and I'm going to push on those two spots while pulling the tray out. And oh, they both came out easily. So I'm going to put this down. And now we can look at the, uh, the problem here. So right off the bat I noticed that, oh look, a piece of plastic came off. Hope that's not important. Alright, so if you turn these gears here, you'll, you might feel a ton of tension. And it's definitely not supposed to feel like that. It's supposed to feel very smooth. So this belt is probably, probably no good anymore. I have a spare belt uh, that's meant for the Xbox 360 DVD drives. I'm going to quickly see if that's uh, the same size. If it is, I'm gonna just going to replace it uh, right away. If it's not, we're going to figure out how to maybe clean it and fix it up. I got my spare belt here, and I take off the old one carefully. Just take this little rubber band thing out. And I'm going to compare it to my replacement, and it looks, the replacement is just a little bit smaller, I think, but it'll probably do. What's more important to me is that I grease up these gears with some uh, lubricant. Got some of this stuff. It's white lithium grease. It's safe on plastic. Pretty much any kind of um, oil-based lubricant should be fine. Don't quote me on that, but I've used it in tons of DVD drives and I've never had a problem. So I'm going to use this uh, with some Q-tips and I'm going to rub it on these gears. Oh, can't see. I'm going to rub it on these gears and then also Everywhere you see dried up grease on the sides and also on the tray itself underneath you can see these teeth and those should be greased up as well. So I'm going to just grease everything up first before I put the belt on um, just so I could see everything better and not worry about the belt spinning around. Alright, so I think I'm done. I'm going to try and put the uh, this tray back on the drive. But first I'm going to give it a quick spray with compressed air. I'm being very careful not to blow directly on the lens. Because that would be really bad. It might damage it. It's not really that dirty. Um, pretty good shape otherwise. Alright, so this is spinning a lot easier than before. Uh, let's see how it goes. Let's put it back together. Here's a moment of truth. I got it hooked back together. And let's start by pressing the eject button, see what happens. Look at that. It actually opened. Uh, something's definitely wrong though. It's definitely having a lot of trouble opening and closing. It's functional though. I think those were, that's because of these um, little black tabs that must have broken off. 
Um, don't worry, I didn't do that. That was already like that. Um, but it doesn't seem to be totally necessary. It works. It's just not as totally stable as before. So anyways, I got, got it powered on. So let's try again and see if it works. Alright. Let's see what happens. Your Xbox can't recognize this disc. Make sure it's an Xbox game. Check if the disc is damaged or dirty. Hmm. Alright, let's try a different game then. Try Crimson Skies instead. If it gives me the same error, I'm gonna be worried. Uh oh. You know what I totally forgot to do? Cleaning. I forgot to clean the laser with some rubbing alcohol. I'm betting that the laser is just a little bit dirty. So let me try that again and we'll see where we are. Alright, so one thing I also completely forgot to do was to grease up uh, this laser spindle. And I'm trying to move the laser right now up and down. And it's actually kind of hard to do. There's a lot of a lot of resistance and I'm guessing if the laser doesn't move right away it's going to throw up an error. So I'm just going to grease these up so this can move a little easier. Then I'm going to dab um, another Q-tip with rubbing alcohol. Preferably 90% or higher if you're going to try it too. And I'm going to clean the laser with that. So first things first, I'm going to very gently, very lightly Grease up the uh, laser spindle because there's a chance it just dried out and can't spin anymore. So this is definitely what you should try first before touching the laser. Then I'm going to slide it up, finish greasing it up. All right, and now I'm just going to. Move it up and down so it spreads evenly. Do this several times. Alright, so that looks pretty good. So the next thing I'm going to do is get some isopropyl alcohol. Got some 91% here. And very, very gently Get some on the Q-tip. All right. Now you don't want it dripping. You just want it, just want it wet. Now the alcohol is going to dry up pretty quickly. Only it's going to take less than thirty seconds. And what you're going to do is just, what I want to do is just very, very gently, not pressing down on it, really, just, just touching it. And while I'm touching it, I'm kind of turning the Q-tip to make sure any of the fibers don't accidentally fall off. Alright, so that should be good. If the laser was dirty and I couldn't see it, definitely not dirty now. I'm going to try booting this game and we'll see if it gives me the dirty disk error again. I'm actually going to wait until I get to the dashboard. Alright. All right, do your thing, come on. Well, it threw up an error again. This is kind of unbelievable, but I got the dirty disc error again, but all I did was eject it, Put it back in, and now we got a game. I really can't explain why it didn't work the first time. Uh, so I'm actually going to try again, this time from a cold boot. So I'm going to turn it off, and with the game inside, I'm going to turn it back on. And I'm going to see what happens. Maybe it was just stubborn the first time, I don't know.
Well, what do you know? It works. Obviously, I'm going to try and test a couple more games just to make sure, but there you go. Non-working Xbox, now a working Xbox. So I'm just going to put everything back together, uh, and then I'm going to mod it, of course. I have to. It's an original Xbox. And then I'm going to sell it to get some of my money back. And yeah, hope you enjoy this video.